Chief Sauce said that speaking from the members of the state who belong to the Nasa Kappa will affect Hong Kong economy. This reason is insufficient. Because most of the foreign domestic helpers, for example, if they are coming from Philippines, they are mostly grad, uh, university graduates. In, they are given permanent residency in Hong Kong. They may not necessarily go for a low skill job, but they will more likely to seek out more professional jobs. So it, in fact, they may be helping Hong Kong economy instead of jeopardizing it. Also, if you say that uh, they will affect Hong Kong economy because they share the minimum, uh, they can get the minimum wage. Actually, this concept is not correct. Because in the minimum wage ordinance, in chapter 7, and section 6, section 7, chapter 608 and section 7, it clearly stated that the ordinance does not apply to a person who is employed as a domestic worker in or in connection with a household and who lives in the household free of charge. So the argument is not is insufficient. Now, today's motion must stand because uh, we believe if we don't give the foreign domestic helper permanent residency, it will be considered as discrimination. The right of abode in Hong Kong is the right to live legally in Hong Kong. The right is given to Chinese citizens who are get, who are born in Hong Kong before or after the establishment of Hong Kong government, or citizens or Chinese citizens who have ordinarily lived in Hong Kong for a continuous period of not less than seven years. Or the right of abode is also given to persons who are not Chinese nationality and have entered Hong Kong with a valid travel documents and have ordinarily lived in Hong Kong for a continuous period of not less than seven years and have taken Hong Kong as a place of permanent residence before or after the establishment of Hong Kong SAR. Now the foreign domestic helper has matched the third requirement, but they still don't, haven't been granted the right of abode. From what we have seen from the news, many Hong Kong people are against this idea is because they do not want Hong Kong to be dominated by other races. As they are worried if one of the domestic helpers are given permanent residency, they will arrange their family members to leave their home countries and come to live in Hong Kong. In fact, this reaction has shown nothing but racial discrimination because similar situation has occurred already. Many people from mainland have moved to Hong Kong to become permanent residents here. Once they've done that, they also arranged their families to come to Hong Kong as well. But no one ever complained why they should be granted permanent residency. This is just because they are also, Chi they are also Chinese. Now that's the foreign domestic helpers of, of different races. They have different skin tones, languages, or cultures as we do. They consider these helpers as outsiders. Even when they are helping us to manage our home, and they will not accept the helpers as, the one, of, as one of the members of their families. Now when they live in Hong Kong as long as we do, or they love Hong Kong as much as we do, they still think that these foreign domestic helpers are foreigners, outsiders, but never one of us because they are not Chinese. But Hong Kong is an interna international city. Being a part of Hong Kong, we should accept everyone of different nationalities, different uh, cultural backgrounds. We even accept refugees from other countries to live in Hong Kong. Why should these foreign domestic helpers be, be excluded? Well, we should not discriminate against them. Therefore, we believe that these domestic Foreign domestic helpers should be granted permanent residency in Hong Kong, and today's motion stands. The other side said that um, they can uh, the domestic helpers might help Hong Kong's economy because they most of them have university degree. However, this is an overgeneralized point. And there are actually uh, many domestic helpers do not receive university degree. And even if they do, the standard is different from Hong Kong. And also, the other side point out that 
um, the minimum wage do not, do not apply to domestic helpers, and this is exactly why we don't want to grant them residency. This is because after seven years, when they become Hong Kong residents, then they can start to have minimum wage. And the other side also point out that uh, we're discriminating the other races. However, this is not the case. We do respect and thank the domestic helpers for their contribution. Actually, there are laws protecting their basic rights and make sure that Hong Kong people respect them. We offer the, the policy of granting their residency. It's not that we doubt their right to be respected. Service cannot be called discrimination. Rather, we oppose on the grounds that, unfortunately, Hong Kong we cannot afford to have more population. We deem granting them residency as an ideal but not realistic dream. The suggestion is ignoring the truth that Hong Kong doesn't have adequate resources for its own people, let alone the domestic helpers. Even the limited resources, it behoves us to be extremely careful when distributing them. There are already complaints from many people about current policy of letting up about 100 mainland people gain residency per day in Hong Kong. Can you imagine what will happen if uh, we let more foreigners come into Hong Kong when 12,000 of them have already reached the basic requirements for gaining residency? Let's not forget that unlike Hong Kongers, they like to give birth to quite a large amount of children and there are possibility that they will bring their children here or start their big families in Hong Kong. And this will pose great burden to our social welfare system. Just like what my teammate has pointed out, uh, we just don't have financial ability to support such a large population. To the CSSA, the Compulsory Social Security Assistance as a point. At the end of 2009, the total number of CSSA cases amounted to about 290,000. This is already posing great pressure on our government. If our domestic helpers gain residency, they can share the CSSA. We can't ignore the chances of the uh, local residents who are in desperate need in the future might find it harder to get CSSA because all of a sudden uh, a large amount of domestic helpers are coming to Hong Kong sharing our um, social welfare. I think before helping the others, don't you think we have the duty to take care of our own people? Besides, uh, there is a 12-year compulsory education in Hong Kong, which is free of charge, subsidized by the government. If we let domestic helpers become Hong Kong residents, we have to prepare ourselves that they might bring along the children or give birth to children in Hong Kong, just like what I said. However, we are already having a hard time providing our Hong Kong students with enough financial support. For example, like us college students, the sponsorship source are uh, reducing year by year, which makes many of them uh, in huge debts after graduations. Given the limited education budget, we believe it is very obvious that we cannot afford to have more children from the, from the domestic helpers. And the medical burden is another case in point. In Hong Kong, uh, the public hospitals and clinics are far cheaper than those in the private ones. This is all because of our government subsidies. We understand that the domestic helpers might get sick in Hong Kong. We are, we are not cruelly banning them from paying a low fee and uh, going to the public hospitals. In fact, using their working visa, the domestic helpers can go to public hospitals and pay a low fee. However, providing them medical uh, subsidies in Hong Kong while they're working for us is one thing, and granting them uh, residency is totally another thing because uh, it means that they can stay in Hong Kong permanently. We have to face the possibility that they will stay in Hong Kong when they get old in order to enjoy our subsidies medical services. Giving them right to enjoy medical subsidies when working for us is really reasonable. However, it doesn't mean that we can unconditionally um, help them permanently. We would like to clarify that we oppose the idea is not because we don't care for our domestic helpers. 
it, this is because the plan is just not rentable. It is not impossible, it is impossible to find a way to grant a residency without depriving our own Hong Kong residents, right? If we have the resources, who wouldn't want to have our domestic hammers? It is just that putting priority right is always important. Good morning, everyone. Our side doesn't think that the, the negative side arguments are sufficient, and now I would like to clarify some points that they have raised. First, um, they said that we can't afford more people. Um, but why? There, the immigration department allow 150 people come to Hong Kong every day. I believe that the immigration department have valid ground very proud to do so. And also, mothers from mainland once give birth to their baby in Hong Kong, their children has their child has already become a permanent resident. The babies haven't made any contribution to our society, but they can enjoy the allowances. But why can't our domestic helper have the uh, have the residency? They have made contribution to our society. But why don't they have rights to enjoy the allowances. And also, we can see that as our, our government storehouse have, has much savings, as, they have, as our government has just implemented the 12 year free education system, and they have just given $6,000 to the qualified residents. We can see that our storehouse has much savings. And if, from this, we can see that the, our the resources will not be limited. So we don't think that the negative side is right to see. Say that giving res permanent residency to our domestic helper will limit the resources is a reasonable point. However, giving the permanent residency to our domestic helpers can reflect and emphasize the equality among our society. As we all know that a permanent resident can draw different kind of allowances, for example, the 12 year free education and the medical risk allowances. As the above, you can see that being a permanent resident in Hong Kong is really beneficial. Residents can save more money in order to spend wisely. However, for the domestic helpers, even they have worked in Hong Kong for more than seven years, they still don't have rights to enjoy the, these allowances. Please imagine, if your domestic helper has worked in Hong Kong for more than 10 years and she doesn't need to transfer money back to her own country, that means her consumption is all in Hong Kong. As she is helping the development in Hong Kong of Hong Kong economy consistently, why don't they have rights to enjoy the allowances? And more importantly, the night teacher in Hong Kong can become permanent resident no matter how long they have stayed in Hong Kong. Why is this the case? It is unfair to the domestic helper. Recently, there was a Filipino maid who has worked in Hong Kong since 1991. She got, she got married in 1996 and gave birth to her baby. Unfortunately, she got divorced with her American husband later. From then on, she has, raised, she has to raise her child up on her own. She tried to apply to permanent residency in 2006 and 2008. However, she was rejected. This mother has lived in Hong Kong for 19 years and made contribution to Hong Kong. In addition, she doesn't need to take care of her family in the Philippines. Actually, her application is not considered thoroughly. <coughs> Hong Kong is her home. Supposedly, she has rights to enjoy the allowances but because of the strict permanent residency institution, she can't. In order to let more domestic helpers treated fairly, our team suggests that we should let domestic helpers who have worked in Hong Kong for more than seven years to have the permanent residency. Thank you.